Happy Friday. Yeah, that's about what we can say. At least right? it's Friday. <laughs> that's right. Well, if it's Friday, an expletive spurs a new existential crisis. Tonight, President Trump and race. The country is now openly debating whether the President of the United States is a racist. Couldn't imagine it. Nor did I ever imagine that I would be sitting in the Oval Office and hear those words from my president. Plus, base politics. Can Democrats still work with President Trump without being punished by their own base? And finally, the president's first physical exam in office. This is MTP Daily, and it starts right now. Good evening, I'm Chuck Todd here in Washington. Welcome to MTP Daily. What are the consequences of having a president who is viewed by many as openly racist? What are the consequences of having a Republican Party that to some appears to be empowering him with its silence? Folks, you can debate all you want about the president's recent language, but you cannot debate what it seemingly reveals about his core beliefs that white Europeans are good and brown immigrants are bad. That is why yesterday's Oval Office meeting with lawmakers has exploded. Not because the president used naughty language to embrace immigrants from Norway while rejecting immigrants from Haiti and Africa. It exploded because for many it confirmed their view that this president sees everything through a, uh, a racial prism and may even have his own racist beliefs. The president has denied the language. Two Republicans in the meeting, Tom Cotton and David Perdue, say they cannot recall the language. Republican Senator Jeff Flake criticized the language. Republican Senator Bill Cassidy is urging his colleagues to ignore the language. The language is not the point. It's what it confirms that is. It confirms the view of a businessman who was sued for discrimination, who became a celebrity ranting about President Obama's birthplace, who became a candidate calling Mexicans rapists, lobbying for a ban on all Muslims, and a wall attacking and then attacking a federal judge because he was a, quote, Mexican, who became a president equating Nazis with counter-protesters, calling his rivals names like Pocahontas, and backing immigration policy that favors white Christians over ethnic minorities. And folks, the political reality is that Republicans are now finding it harder and harder to defend this president's beliefs. This is what Paul Ryan had to say. I read those comments later last night. Uh, so first thing that came to my mind was very unfortunate, um, unhelpful. We've got great friends from Africa in Janesville uh, who are doctors who are just incredible citizens. And uh, I just think it's important that we celebrate that. Sometimes you need to see see how Speaker Ryan says something and not just read it in a script. You could see his body language there only reinforces his discomfort with all this. This is what one of the president's staunchest allies, Governor Rick Scott, had to say. If the reports are true, you know, uh, he should he should take them back. I disagree with them completely. And as for the language which the president tried to deny, that is not based on anonymous sources alone. Someone in the room went public. Should warn you that some of this may not be appropriate for some of our younger viewers. And then he went on when we started to describe the immigration from Africa that was being protected in this uh, bipartisan measure. That's when he used these vile and vulgar comments, calling the nations they come from shitholes. You've seen the comments in the press. I have not read one of them that's inaccurate. He said these hate-filled things, and he said them repeatedly. Senator Lindsey Graham was also in the room, and he put out a statement saying, quote, I said my piece directly to President Trump yesterday. And two sources tell NBC News that President Trump was working the phones last night to gauge reaction to the fallout from the comments he now denies. Today, he would not answer shouted questions from the press after he signed a proclamation honoring, of all people, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Mr. President, are you a racist? 